Hi guys, it's Dom here from Sounds Fear Magazine. Just had a wonderful chat with Kare Calloway of Queen Kwong about the new record, Couples Only, some of the intense experiences that went into making that record, inspirations and loads more. Thank you so much for checking this out. Really appreciate your time and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Kare, the first question I'd like to ask you, because again, you've you've done quite a lot with your career. You've uh, been through uh, been through quite a lot in your career. Um, I'd like to ask you how you define success to start off with. What does it mean to you, both as an artist and as a person? You know, I think it's actually it's interesting that you ask this because I've done I've pondered this mm. um, more so in the last few years than ever, because I think the definition of success changes as you get older and your priorities and um, shift. Mm. Um, I think when I was younger, success wasn't about anything except making art and, um, and not connecting what that means in terms of like financially what that means. <laughs> Um, you know, it would, it, success wasn't based on um, how much money art could bring in because you don't think about like paying for health insurance and paying for your gas bill, you know, yep. um, and being a teenager and kind of having that punk ethos where it was just, oh, I'll, as long as I can play music, I'll tour forever. I don't care if I have to sleep on people's sofas or sleep on floors for the rest of my life. Um, but hold on real quick. Those are good. We're actually like shooting a music video right now. So That's I'm, cool. That's so um, good. So I, um, but you know, then you, as an adult, you realize that that stuff like paying your bills and having the essentials, like the boring stuff matters. Mm. And, and also, I mean, living in a country, it's like, we're capitalists. Money does, that's how people measure success. And it's hard for that not to, um, consciously or even subconsciously affect, um, yeah. you know, your personal definition of success. But I think for me as an artist, success has been, um, has meant being able to do what I want to do in the ways I want to do it. Um, and to always, it has always meant a lot to me to continue to push myself and push boundaries and always, tr you know, try different things, do different things, um, and never, never be, you know, a stagnant kind of middle of the road, mm. um, artist. And that, that's just, as long as I can make art that I feel challenged by, yeah. um, I think that filling you know um as an artist yeah as a person i think um i have reconsidered what quote unquote success is just in terms of being able to survive as a person in america you know it's it's um as an adult who has to take care of herself um and it's hard because those two things don't line up all the time yeah yeah and i'll, and I'll talk to you a little bit about perception in a bit because again Perception versus reality, particularly in the music industry, is is uh, is something else entirely. So we'll, we'll come on to that. Um, I I wanted to ask you as a direct follow up from the success question because uh, it follows on nicely. How have you sort of changed and developed from say Get a Witness when you came? I remember discovering your music years ago and getting the PR and getting really excited and then seeing the live shows and how kind of crazy it was. Uh, back in the you know back in those days uh, to where you are now with couples only because you've been you you've been married you've been you know you've you've we've had all the all the chaos that goes with that uh, uh, and you've you've obviously changed a lot from that level so how would you say you've developed you know personally through through the music that you've made over the years like what have you learned about yourself um i think for me there's never been I've never really stopped to think about what I'm doing in the moment in terms of the mm. music I'm making. Like there is no thought process to it. Um, 
it's just doing it's all yeah. the act of doing and i think when i when i was saying that success to me as an artist is just being able to do what i want and you know as the way i want to do it is is that has been as long as i've stayed true to that vision or what i feel is genuine in the moment um that's what's important but i think personally going through everything in the last i guess get a witness was man six six years ago or seven years ago i i think the personal growth is not something i connect with music because i'm not consciously thinking about mm. what i'm creating mm. it, yeah. it just reflects where i'm at and my my the growth it kind of goes without saying you know like the growth is going to be in the art and the music without me making an effort to show that growth or even understand it i don't even really take the time to process growth you know i think yeah 10 years from now i'll be able to answer this question more effectively and be able to articulate better but because this is still something i'm going through these changes are still something i'm going through it's hard to say like mm -hmm. i know i'll pat myself on the back like i know i've grown as a person and i could see that in my art and in my personal day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. but um but i haven't there hasn't been enough time to really be able to pinpoint exactly mm -hmm. how yeah. you know that's reflected i think it's just important to the growth as a person and as, as an artist that does tie in with what I think is successful. I think artists who don't challenge themselves and don't try to grow, I, I don't, I don't know what the point is, you know, to just stay in that same space. Yeah, it's just, yeah. isn't that boring? Like, it's like, if you're not growing and not trying to expand, um, isn't that boring? It just, yeah, so, so I would the, think. So sort of buries your head in the sand you a little bit. You're not, you're not learning anything about yourself or the world around you, I guess. I don't know. If that, is that, yeah, is that, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. really something I've really learned is just to, um, to actually not think about it too much. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I think that was the biggest lesson is just the things that I feel like I've done best that the has been when I haven't thought about it. And I mm. think art loses a lot of, um, for me, it's, um, loses a lot of its visceral, true meaning and value when it's overthought. Mm -hmm. So I try not to connect the dots, to be honest, which is not helpful when I'm doing interviews like this and you're asking me to connect no, dots. It, I'm like, I don't even think about it. It, it actually moves on to my, to my next album based question. Cause yeah, it was great. done a lot of, a lot of improvisation. Uh, you know, on the, mm -hmm. on, on the record, which is in, in terms of in terms of building everything from the ground up, just doing it in the moment. A lot of the times, uh, you know, is, is what, you know, when I, when I read the press release for the new music, I was like, wow. So a lot of this stuff has just been done in the moment with some wonderful collaborators. So I wanted to ask you from, you know, talking about the album and its development and the new music that you're putting out, what have been some of the, the good moments that have come out of the recording process and that kind of way of doing it, just doing things and in the moment? And also, I guess, what are the challenges of working in that way? Um, well, it's funny, with this press release, it was clearly stated that creative process was what how that, um, you know, just improvised. But yeah. that's how the last two records were too. Mm. Um, I think because I... I honestly, until this record, I didn't realize that other people didn't do that either. Like, I, I, I guess I've just never thought about it. Once again, it's just me not thinking about it. It's, I can, I was playing shows and opening big tours and putting myself out there before I, for years before I put out a recording. Mm. Um, recording was so draining and unfulfilling and uninspiring for me. Um, and so I could never successfully go into a studio, record a record and put it out. So I was playing shows and had a bunch of, you know, um, momentum years for years before I put out a record and everyone was like, we really need a record. And I struggled with it so much and get a witness was, um, written in the same way. Everything was improvised and it was like a stream of consciousness record. It was almost like a like that was the theme it was like a theme record because it was all just stream of consciousness 
Um, and I, that was the only thing that worked for me. It was the only thing that felt real. Um, and so that's been the only way I've recorded actually. So the three LPs have been recorded that way. That's not a new um, process, but you do, I think with Get a Witness to this record, I've figured out how to better um, use that process to my advantage because there are, there are negatives to doing it that way. And I think Get a Witness is the negative, the downside of recording by improvising everything um, is more apparent in Get a Witness. <laughs> like I think um, Get a Witness really was stream of consciousness and then I just put it out. There was no, um, no refinement. Um, I just wanted to put something out that was real. Um, mm. And it's hard to listen to. I, there's some mm. songs where I'm like, I can't believe, like I can't even listen to it because it's just, it's very lo-fi. It's very thrown together. Um, and I think from that record to this record, I've just learned how to do it better. Mm. Um, mm. It's still, there's an immediacy and there's the, um, just this kind of in the moment um, rawness still, but mm. I think I just have harnessed it a little bit better. Um, and so the, the downside always is when you don't, when you record a song that you've never played before, you're recording something that you don't know. You can only do it with so much confidence. You haven't um, played it a hundred times and thought about it like, oh, well, then we could do this part or then we could do that part. Or, you know, this would be cool here. This would be cool there. You're just, it's like first version. Mm. Um, the first version of anything is usually, <sighs> I don't want to say not the best because obviously I think it, the other part of me thinks it is the best because that's how I'm releasing music. <laughs> but I do know the difference between Get a Witness as the record it is versus Get a Witness as the live show. The songs were so much more developed live. Mm. And there were times where after I toured and played 50 shows playing Get a Witness, after I played those songs 50 times, I could have recorded them better Yeah. <laughs> after yeah. playing the songs 50 times rather than recording it and releasing it the first time I ever played it. So mm. there's that downside. You know, are they as strong as possible in their yeah. first draft? No. But you compromise that for what I think is the biggest takeaway, which is the most genuine and real. That's that's so awesome. That's the compromise there. Yeah. And I think between Get a Witness and the, to this record, Couples Only, I figured out how to um, do that in a more in a, a more effective way where no matter what, even though I know that the songs and Couples Only will develop and change as I play them live and get to know them better and even learn them, you know, I still think that the versions where the first versions where they stand right now, how they're being released, I'm super confident in them. They may change, but they're not, I don't think they'll, it won't be, you know, for the better. I think no matter what, ultimately, um, what I choose, it that's more important than like it being not the strongest, most thought out versions is that it's the most real version. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's important to me, especially with being an artist and making art. I want to just make sure it's real because I feel like that's lacking these mm -hmm. days. Everything's mm -hmm. so overthought and over polished. And there's something that I think people do pick up on it. I, I believe, or I'd like to believe where even if they're not conscious of it, I think people can tell when something's not totally genuine. At least that's what I tell myself. But then I look at some shit that works these days and I'm like, really? How are people buying this? You know what I mean? How do people believe this is genuine? Yeah. But I, it's still something I value. And as an artist, I think every artist kind of suffers from that imposter. Yeah. Um, you know, like feeling like an imposter. The creative curse. Extent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like yeah. And curse, this is yeah. kind of the way to navigate around that is just by this is what it is. Mm. This is me in like the raw state. There you go. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, well, that was a really long. No, answer. no, it's, it's actually really. I, I, I want to uh, take a moment. I've got four or five more questions for you, but I want to take a moment just to thank you because I appreciate the motivation. I, I have an instrumental, uh, well, like drone project that I do with with other people, 
and that it's all improvised and we do it live improvised and recorded improvised. And the amount of times we've been laughed out of a of a venue or a, or a space because, you know, we're not a real band because we just create. Uh, and, and for me, you know, I really enjoy working in that way. I find it really therapeutic and also really interesting. Yeah. So it's actually really nice because you, I think to my knowledge, and I've been doing this for over a decade, um, you know, one of the first people that's actually gone in and say, yeah, no, I do it like off the cuff completely. And, and I love that. I think that's yeah. so, so I, I appreciate the motivation uh, on, on that level. Thanks. As well. Good. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 um, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting way to do things and it's, it can be a lot of fun and also quite stressful, but yeah, I, I get what you mean. It's polarizing too, because like you yeah. said, with your act, like, well, people will judge you and laugh you yeah. out of a room. Well, it's kind of like, this is definitely not for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. You know? um, and I think if people don't appreciate the same things I'm, I appreciate, I think they're probably not going to appreciate my music because, yeah. um, you know, they're, it's, it's far from perfect. And so if you are, if you're looking for perfection in art, which I think is just totally boring. Um, but if that's what you're into, you're not going to be into this, you know, I'm not interested in perfection. Mm. Um, I think I'm just interested in doing something real that has, um, that has weight and that is effective that, ha you know, that affects people. Yeah. But really when it comes down to it, it's selfish because it is for me, it is like you said, it's, there's something therapeutic about it. And it's just kind of like purging. Mm. Um, and I think overthinking that process really is a buzzkill. Yeah. Now it's interesting. Actually, I, 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 I correct myself because the first ever interview I ever did was with an artist called Kate, Katie Jane Garside, who was in a band called Queen Adrena in the UK and Daisy Chainsaw. They were like nineties sort of uh, indie, like riot girl kind of stuff. And, and, and she writes, okay in the same way and 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 that was again that was the first interview I ever did and it was so so it was just kind of it's weird I've, I've literally just remembered doing that and uh, there was like a raw energy to that sound and that's similar to you where like I think a lot of people feel this primal energy um I don't make a habit of recommending artists to people I'm interviewing but um Queen Adrena was was just like this raw primal energy um, and Daisy Chainsaw before that. Ray, Ray's the kind of I'll person. Sure. Ray's the kind of person who might know those those bands because he's big into like nineties Brit pop and that kind of vibe. But Daisy Chainsaw and Queen Adrena, similar kind of raw, vibrant, uh, emotive stuff. Um, not you know not similar in, in loads of ways, but just that primal energy there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that just reminded me of that. Um, back to the interview um, side of it, and thank you for <laughs> allowing me to trail off there no of um, course i'll definitely check it out yeah um thank you very much for explaining that process as well um one of the things i did want to talk to you about is so part of my uh, day job part of the day, uh, day work that i do is working with young people who uh come from disadvantaged backgrounds um they use a music studio uh that's uh supported by the community to create music and some of those young people come from abusive relationships and they have uh, I, I actually get quite emotional talking about it sometimes. Uh, they come with a lot of pain and a lot of um, anxiety around and wanting to put that in music and uh, sort of talking through, you know, that, you know, their, their pain and their anxiety with, with me and other people. Uh, and, and one of the things that comes across to me always is this kind of confidence that's been beaten, beaten out of them sometimes, sometimes physically, you know, sometimes actually, yeah. and sometimes mentally. And one of the things that's always struck me about your performance is you, you always struck me as, struck me as quite a confident person, um, certainly from my perception. And I wanted to ask you uh, if you had a message for anybody who has been through, obviously I can't, I'm not going to compare and contrast directly because, you know, it, it wouldn't be fair to do that. You've obviously had your own experiences, uh, you know, and, and these people have had theirs, but uh, do you have any message for anybody who's been through difficulty, challenges, uh, mental, uh, mentally and physically, who are really struggling to either find their voice or rediscover it um, again? You know, I think as, I don't know if this sounds just really... 
too simple or what, but I think getting older, growing up and getting through a lot of traumatic experiences, you just learn that, um, you know, there's this resilience in humans and yourself that, um, that even when you feel like humans are just really resilient, you know, mm. and shit happens. Um, and really just to trust that even like, you know, I don't trust much, but <laughs> I do know, um, it's been proven over and over again, at least in, for me that, um, the things that feel impossible to overcome as humans, like we do, we, we overcome them or we get through them, you know? And I think that's the, the point is like, just trusting that there is another, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You may not, you don't have to overcome it. You just get through it, you know? Mm. And I think the process of just getting through something, um, even as grueling as it is, it's, it's, it's going to happen. Like, it's just a matter of putting one foot in front of the other and um, just trusting that there is an end mm. to whatever suffering and whatever, you know, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is our nature is to survive, mm. you know, that's what our nature is to survive. And sometimes it's just that simple yeah. that you just trust that you may not overcome something in terms of like come out of it and feel like, Oh, mm. I'm in a better place. You know, that unfortunately it's not always a better place, but you will be in a different place. It will, you'll get through. Mm. It's just one of those. Um, it doesn't sound pleasant because it rarely is. Yeah. It's just trusting that like, there is another side. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not about, it doesn't have to, pe people put so much weight into like being, you know, overcoming trauma and being like a bigger, better person. And like, you will be stronger, mm. Mm. but people put too much weight into like what it all means. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everyone has their shit, shit happens. Life is not fair. Um, I don't believe everything happens for a reason. Things just happen. Um, and it's not fair. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you will get through it. You know, it's just, it's just trusting that like yeah. it's going to suck and then it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, it doesn't, that sounds like so shitty like no no not at all but i just think it's just that's just the reality of it like there's mm. no golden like mm. you know um big inspirational quote yeah unfortunately yeah, yeah. no you I, know I, I appreciate that yeah it's just um we're humans and we're like it's survivalism you and you you just have to trust in that yeah like we've humans have evolved and made it through a lot, mm. famine, war, you know, like natural disaster. Um, and to trust that it's just in our natural, it's innate, it's innate. Mm. Mm. So it's okay if you feel like it's fucking impossible Yeah, because your feelings, it comes down to something that's just bodily innate. You know, it's just not even up to your feelings. It feels yeah. like shit. Yeah. It feels yeah. like shit and it's impossible. It feels impossible, you yeah. know? Yeah. But just trust that it's not. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, you it's know, it's not like a romantic inspiring. Yeah, no, thing right no, now, that's, but... yeah, that's not, that's not, again, I think that realism is important. And I think, you know, to follow on from that, obviously couples only isn't the solution. You know, it isn't, I know you've used it a lot for catharsis in terms of, getting some, you know, getting some emotion out, getting some, you know, we talked about the value of, of kind of artistic catharsis uh, earlier on. Do you feel closer to, I think you said the light, of the, you know, like a light at the end of the tunnel, not that I'm sort of glorifying this, you know, 
sort of light that's there for everybody. But do you feel a little closer to that now? Because it would be, I think, I, I'm not sure it would be the best thing for me to say, you know, couples only is the solution to all of the shit you went through and you, everything is great now because, like you said, it, it probably isn't. Uh, yeah. But do you feel closer to that now? To, 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 to feeling better in yourself, rebuilding, I guess? Oh, com- you know, completely. I think that, that that's the point, though. It's like it was cathartic, and I think it's important to have um, some kind of purge to get it out of you, just like out of your body even. Mm. Um, but, at the you know, there's always going to be – it's not like you – get through one thing and you never have to go through anything again. It's like, you know, sometimes it's just one thing after the next and it feels like it's never ending. But in terms of couples only, I think it's just like, that's the proof. It's like, there are times that I talk about on this record where it felt like impossible. Life's over, that's it, you know? But obviously it's not. You know, then you like find some humor in it and you find some, a different perspective and you do like, I've, I'm much more, um, I think there's some parts of couples only that's brutally self-aware where I could kind of laugh at myself and the ridiculousness of a lot of what I'm talking about. And that comes with time, you know, it's, it's a process. And unfortunately there's like no way around it there's no fast track it's just like slogging through and I think um there's songs on that on the record that are way more it, it, it runs the gambit of like every emotion you experience when it comes to loss and grieving and blaming yourself and then taking responsibility but then also being like fuck you you know like that's um And I think if I would have made this record the moment I was going through everything I was going through, it would have sounded a lot differently. It would Mm. have just been a lot of EMDR ATMs, you know, it would have. (laughs) So I think, um, I think that's why I made this record when I did is because it was with that perspective. There's a lot of different emotions in this process Mm. um that you could only really you could only get that perspective after time yeah yeah you just have to trust in the time in that process trust in the process yeah yeah trust in the process unfortunately like i wish there was some answer to like fast forward all that you know it's it's real though and that's that's important i think for people uh listening and, and watching um before I, I like I said, we'll wrap up in uh, three, three, three or four questions time. I, I wanted to um, add a question around image and perception. Um, obviously, again, from watching videos of yours, very visual, very visually inspired. I remember watching the, well, most recently watching the I Know Who You Are video. And it kind of got me thinking about a question around perception and imagery. Now, it can be used in the music industry positively to create art and some people can hide behind it we talked about some of the artists that perhaps you know um you don't know quite why they you know that they're, they're, they're making a dent because some of it isn't very real you know there's a perception a sheen uh that perhaps isn't real and i wanted to ask you about your understanding of of image and perception in the music industry and how it can be used and and, and how you use it this image and is image does it matter to you how things look and how things come across uh, and to what extent uh, does it matter to you, I guess? When it comes to the music industry as a whole and how image is important, I have no understanding of it at all. Mm. Um, I, I know it's important to me to represent myself in a way that's genuine or that um, that that's me. Like, I think I'm just one of those artists that I put myself who I am. Like I'm, it's not a persona. It's just who I am. I, I'm only good at being who I am. I, I'm not good at faking anything. Um, unfortunately, I probably would get a lot further if I were better at that. But um, I know, I know a lot of artists who can just, who put, have a very curated image. Mm. Um, 
And I think it's kind of weird. Like, that's just not, that's not what's important to me Mm. because this is more of, um, I think as long as I feel good about how I'm presenting myself and that it's in a genuine way, that's all that's important to me. But I know that's not what's important in the music industry. I know it's very curated now and um, everything has to do with branding and fitting in a box and being able to be properly labeled and and um, aligned with brands and other bands that sound and look just like you. And that's always hindered my quote unquote success in terms of like finding a target market and fitting into a demographic, you know? Um, but I just think it's so boring. Mm. And for me, it's just, I, I have no patience. I have very little patience in general, <laughs> but I just, I have no interest or patience. Like when I'm not interested in something, I have no patience for it. So making music that's like, that curated just to fit into one image is incredibly boring and uninspiring. So I, I can't even get myself to do it. Um, but I think now more than ever, I'm realizing an image is more important than anything in terms of branding, but as an artist and as a person, that's not what I'm interested in. I just feel like I want to do what feels right. And what's me, I don't put much thought into it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes, it makes, it makes sense. I think it's just cause I can, I get asked a lot by people and they're like, oh, you know, this, this, uh, you know, this band or this, uh, they, you know, they, they look this way, but actually <laughs> they're terrible people, but they present themselves in a certain way. Uh, and, and, and I guess, it, again, it just got me thinking about, well, so I have something I think about quite a lot about how percept- people get lost in the perception of, of, of who they are and what their band's supposed to be. And they get stuck in that. Um, Usually I feel like that is just themselves. a cop out. Yeah. Like, I think it's just such a cop out to, to, to stay, to stay in this like curated bubble where you're only one thing, you're aligning yourself with one thing. So you could like appeal to one demographic. And I mean, people aren't one-sided or at least not the people I like, or I'm interested in, you know, I think that's, we're multidimensional or, um, and to just play one part, like, oh, I'm a rock girl or whatever the fuck, like, I, that's not the case. That's not the music I make. That's not who I am. I don't think personalities are so one-sided and I'm just, I think it's incredibly boring and limiting, but I also feel like people use it as a cop-out because they can't, because it's easier just to be like, this is me and this is my image and this is all I have to do. You know, it's not like that creative, is it? Mm. It's just, um, but for branding purposes, yeah, I guess that's probably smart, but I'm just personally so bored by it that um, I have, I can't get myself to even, you know, and at the same time, it's just, I think maybe I am too impatient to think those things out. I think I should probably think them out more. Um, Maybe like, oh, what does my Instagram grid look like? Is that visually appealing? Is that like color blocked or whatever? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't have the time. I have no interest. Um, I think I'm hoping people can just gravitate towards something because it's good or inspiring or makes them feel something or makes them think something. It just has some sort of an effect, you know, Mm. no matter what it looks like or how it's presented. Yeah. Yeah. It's that visceral visual, you know, feeling. That's a common denominator. It's just like, you know, I'm many different things, but it's all genuine. And I think people really um, are missing out on that these days. It's like, Mm. you look cool, but so does the band, that band, you look like the other cool band. You look just like that other cool band and you sound like them too. You know, it's just, it's boring. Yeah. No, yeah, I I do. I do get that. Um, Again, uh, just a couple more uh, questions for you, Carrie. Um, Thank you so much for taking the time out for me as well. Um, I want to- And you know what? I have to say, this is like my first interview on this record cycle. And I, so I'm totally- Thank you, <laughs> because uh, I'm like, wow, I really should start thinking about how to answer these uh, things because no, I haven't thought about it at all. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. It's um, it's just uh, I, re- I really appreciate again. I really appreciate the time because I like I could have waited, but I wanted to, you know, because I, I was offered to wait 
for a little bit. And I was like, no, because I've wanted to chat to you face to face for a while. So I'm really glad we got this time to do it. But um, I, I do want to, uh, again, sort of a little bit of a different slant on the motivations question outside of music. I think, um, again, one of the things I people come, young people come to me with, it's like I'm having a really bad day. And sometimes I don't even know how to get out of bed. And I wanted to ask you again, you know, people can see your music videos and they can see you live and they see this side of you. Um, and I wanted to ask you on a bad day or on your worst day, if you're comfortable talking about it, you don't have to. What have been the things that pull you out of bed? What are the things, people, places, movies, whatever it is, where you are having the worst fucking time but you can draw some motivation from somebody you know somebody doing something what is it that you do to find motivation outside of music on your worst day if you could tell yeah, me about well, that. music never motivates me to get out of bed <laughs> if anything it's one of the things that depresses me the most yeah. but um no I have lots of bad days and there are days where I didn't get out of bed for a while you know where it's like feels impossible to get out of bed or shower or eat or anything um really I can honestly say that my literally my life was saved by the support group I have around me um and that's what the most important thing is I think that I never really stopped to think about the value of real friendship and real people in my life and um until I went through the last few years. And honestly, it's a very small but tight um, support group I have. And I think just having that support system of a few real people, like legitimate people. And I think that's so important um, to find your few people who, and one of them is Joe Cardamone who, um, I've collaborated, he's produced every record of mine, but it's just to have people who you trust, who can tell you, yeah, you feel like shit and like killing yourself right now, but you mean something, you, you know, you mean something to me and it's going to be, there's going to be a better day. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not even next week. You may not feel better till next year but there will be a better time, you know, and having people who are there for you, who can keep telling you that, and you could trust in that, you know, and kind of people who could hold that hope for you when you're feeling that so hopeless, mm. you know, I think that was essential to me because I didn't get out of bed. There wasn't something that like got me excited to live again. It was just time and pro like that process of mm. feeling like shit and having a couple people around me who are, who are like, you may not remember what you love about life and you may not remember how great you are, but I do. Lovely. And just believe me when I say it'll get better and you're worth a shit, mm. even if you don't feel it right now, you know? And I think just having a couple of people like that, who you trust, who yeah. can keep that, you know, hold that faith for you when you don't have any left in yourself, you know? Yeah, man, it's that, that's awesome. That's awesome to hear that somebody was able to say, you know, I believe in you. And it's sometimes just a simple phrase in you know, a simple, you know, so, something simple like that can change everything for you. And, and I think that's, yeah, even if you don't believe it, like, yeah. I mean, I, it's true. Like I didn't believe it. And, but I know that the couple people I have who were telling me that I know that they're not bullshitters, mm -hmm. you know? So I think just having a few people in your life who can just who you can just trust in, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I actually got to speak to Joe uh, when he was doing the Dark Mark Skeleton Joe stuff with Mark Lonigan. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just like really nice dude, actually. I got a lot of, uh, you know, I just had a conversation like this. It was really, it's just really insightful, intelligent human being. So yeah. nice to know he's doing well and do, you guys are doing some yeah, work Yeah, he's together. actually here with me. We're like in oh. Mexico making a music video. Oh, cool. And he's outside directing people well, right now. Awesome. Well, so, yeah. yeah. Like, if you, he probably was a few months ago, but I, but I asked him the success question and we had quite a deep answer on that one. So, uh, but he, <laughs> oh, he, I mean, we have conversations about that all the time and yeah. our, it's always shifting, but, yeah. um, 
it's good to have some, I think having at least one person who just knows you like knows, yeah. knows your worst side and knows your best side. Cause then you could trust them. It's not just like, Oh, you're bullshitting me. Yeah. You only know the side of me that's on Instagram. Yeah. You know, like he has seen the worst of me, yeah. the worst. I mean, we've known each other for like 17 years, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So to have somebody to just be like, listen, you can be an asshole, but you don't like, you don't deserve this and you don't deserve to feel like this. And like, you know, take your time to feel like shit for a while, but don't kill yourself. It's not worth it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The real, so. the real talk. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The real talk. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, uh, Kare, it's, it's, again, thank you very much for, uh, for going through some of that stuff with me. We'll do the, the press and plugging bit now. Um, okay. Yeah. At, yeah. At the, at the end. Um, obviously we're in the UK and you are particularly loved in the UK and Europe. You've done some really cool tours over here before. Uh, do you have a message for any UK fans that, have supported you and also to those that may just be discovering you through couples only i mean i have a the existing fans i have mostly in the uk and europe um i got really lucky like i, I because there aren't tons of them but the ones i have are so loyal and i think it is like a quality over quantity and so i I'm so deeply grateful in these days of like Instagram and algorithms and everyone's fleeting like attention spans to have such a loyal fan base has made such a huge difference. It's really just honestly the only thing that's kept me going in terms of putting out records and stuff because um, it's hard to keep up with all the trends and all the fleeting bullshit flash in the pan stuff that goes on. But my fans in the UK and Europe have been so loyal. Um, and that is not something that I um, take for granted at all. I think about it all the time and I'm super lucky to have those kind of solid fans because it's like lifers, you know, it's just like people who are just committed forever. And um, that makes a huge difference. But um, I think for new listeners, for me, I mean, I'm trying to be, I, I want to feel positive and hopeful about this record because I really do believe in it. But um, I think if anyone actually takes the time to listen to this record, actually listen, that's, um, that says something about them, something huge. I think it's kind of like a birds of a feather thing. I think finding a fan base and finding new fans has just come from, are you the kind of person who can listen to this record, actually listen to a record? you know, mm -hmm. and take the time to actually hear what someone's saying um, instead of just the 10 second kind of TikTok scroll yeah, mentality. Yeah. The playlist. And, the, um, the playlist yeah. Generation. Yeah. And that's how I've found my people. So I feel like people who actually listen to this record, you're my kind of person. You know, <laughs> we get each other because that's actually rare these days. Yeah. You yeah. know, so many people even like press journalists, they won't even listen to the whole thing. Um, and so I think just finding people, new listeners who are actually listening is, um, that says a lot right there. It's just like, okay, we get each other in some kind of way that a lot of people aren't connecting at all in this way, you know? So I think finding people who are actually going to listen, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and all power to you. I think, you know, it's, it's an exciting time through a lot of shit that you've come through, but I'm, I'm really happy to, to be speaking to you today and see where you're at as well. I think it's, it's, it's fantastic. So, you know, I, I do wish you the best of luck. I'm going to make you, uh, going to make you do the plugging bit now. I know you don't yeah, like yeah. Instagram. I know you don't like Instagram or anything like that, but where, where can people find you? Where do you want people to go? Uh, what, what have you got to plug at the moment? So, I mean, obviously um, the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the record comes out um, July 22nd, couples only on, um, no, not July 22nd. Look, I did such a terrible job. July 12th. Couples only comes out July 12th on Sonic Ritual. Um, and I think we're releasing seven, I think four singles, three or four singles before the release date with music videos, et cetera. Um, and I will... It looks like no promises, but right now it's in the plans to be um, touring Europe and the UK this fall. Excellent. So definitely um, get ready for that. And I, um, 
and yeah, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and I have a TikTok, but I think I'm just going to end up like everyone pushed me to do a TikTok. And I think it's just so ridiculous, but um, you could find me on everything, whether how present I am on those things. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm yeah. going to try, but um, definitely it's just at queen Kwong pretty much everywhere. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, definitely come find me on the road. That's cool. the biggest plug, cool. you know, well, get the record and, and, oh yeah, I've been told to talk about how important streaming is. Okay. Stream. Stream you know, the record. Stream the record, put it on repeat or whatever. I don't know how people do it these days. They like just repeat the record on whatever streaming you have, rate it, share it. I guess that all matters with algorithms and that's totally a foreign language to me, but um, it does make a difference. And as lame as it is, and it makes me kind of sick to have to plug this stuff, but it makes a difference, especially with indie artists like me. Um, it's kind of the only way to break through um, all the noise. So yeah, if you have those streaming platforms, stream my record. Go for it. Awesome. Well, Karay, yeah. thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you on the road in the UK. 